Welcome back. Ford Motor going all in on America's appetite for trucks. The automaker announcing last week it will discontinue all but two of its car models in the domestic market. Joining me right now in an exclusive interview is the executive vice president and the president of global operations at Ford, Joe Henricks. Good to see you, Joe. Yeah, good morning, Marie. Thank you so much for joining us. So 90 percent of your fleet are going to be trucks and SUVs. That's right. Why? Well, by 2020, we believe that's where the market is going. And if you look at historically what's been taking place in the U.S. industry the last 10 years, consumers have been moving more towards SUV. They like the higher seating height, the more safety, better visibility, more flexibility for passengers, more room for cargo. So we can give them fuel efficient options with those SUV body styles. You know, it's interesting because I, I did notice a difference w w when you look at oil prices in terms of it's tied to the market. When oil prices go all the way up and gasoline prices get expensive, people do switch to smaller cars, don't they? They have historically, yes. But for the most part, if you just look at oil sort of flat and stable, they like the trucks. No the question. SUVs. If gas prices stay within a certain range, people love in America love to have their larger vehicles. But if you think about 10 years ago when we had that large oil spike in the spring of 08, people did move to cars. They didn't have the options of fuel efficient SUVs that we have today. We have higher speed transmissions, hybrids and plug-in hybrids coming on our SUVs. And so we can give them fuel efficient options if oil price were to spike again um, on SUVs and give them that flexibility they're looking for. Why did you choose the, the cars that you chose in terms of keeping these models in the market. Uh, the Fiesta, the C-Max, the Focus, the Fusion, and the Taurus. Ford is discontinuing these five of the slower selling sedans. will only produce the Mustang and the new Focus Active Crossover. Right. So give us your reasoning behind doing away with those production and why you keep the Mustang in the, and, and just two models, obviously. Sure. Well, Mustang is the heart and soul of Ford Motor For Company. Sure. You know, fast, fun, and affordable. And we're always going to have that sports car, which is really exciting. And Focus, we, need a, we wanted to have an option for people who do still love the, the sedan and want to have a lower price point vehicle. But we all now have an Echo Sport in the market, which is a lower priced SUV than the Escape. So we're able to cover the market with, with more offerings of SUVs and still be able to meet the needs of customers in those price bands. Okay. Uh, the, the company reported earnings, obviously, uh, above expectations in the first quarter, but also announcing it will reduce capital spending by $5 billion over the next several years. Is that part of this plan? It is part of this plan. So if you're not reinvesting in the next generation of some of these sedans, you can save the capital, the tooling, the investment in the plants. But also we're getting a lot more efficient in everything we do. Tell me about the, the F-150. Obviously, this has been America's best-selling truck for 40 years running. How will this move help Ford fend off? Off the competitors who want to get that market share, like yeah, GM. Well, well, we're certainly going to keep investing in the crown jewels of the company, which are the F-Series trucks, and they've been 41 years in a row the best-selling trucks in America. And we're keeping our lineup fresh. We just freshened the vehicles last year, more fuel-efficient, better options. And believe me, we're going to keep on the forefront of where trucks are going in America. You know, it's interesting because it is a real departure from the bread and butter that has been this company for so many years. It's got to be a little nostalgic. What are your employees saying about this? Well, there's a lot of emotion and a lot yeah. of passion for vehicles, which we appreciate. But you think about it over time, body styles have been changing. I mean, if we still stuck with the, stuck with the Model T body style, we'd all be driving, by the way, they look like SUVs in today's vernacular, right? They were cars back then. But the, the yeah, SUV body style has always been dominant for flexibility. And so consumers want fuel efficiency, of course, and they also want that flexibility and some of the safety that comes with, with the vehicles like SUVs. So what is it? how much will this save? What, what's the end result of all of this? Well, we've said... We said in our earnings call last week, and we said in October as well, that between the two, we've identified over around $25 billion of savings over the next four or five years in our business. This is a contributor to that. There are a lot of other components to it about getting more fit as a business, getting more competitive. But certainly as we prioritize where consumers are going, where they're pay willing to pay the price uh, and, and the revenue for the vehicle they're getting, you see it happening all around the world, not just in the U.S., SUVs are becoming the more dominant body style. You know, it's, it's interesting because the company has really changed its focus because you think back years ago when your former CEO said, we want this to be a mobility company. It was a completely different, different focus than what the company's all about in terms of producing cars and trucks. So do you worry, do you have any concerns going all in on trucks and SUVs should the market change in terms of oil prices? What happens if gasoline prices sure. go all up, go, sure. go higher, and you're all in on trucks? Well, we'll still have cars around the world. We're launching an all-new Focus in Europe right now. So this now. is just the U.S.? Um, this is dominantly in the North American market where consumers have a little more flexibility. We have, so we'll have cars around the world. But most importantly, we believe we can give people better options at the same price points, the things they want, 
um, but also give them flexibility and the fuel economy they're looking for. Light weighting, you know, transmissions, EcoBoost technology on engines. A lot of things have changed to be able to give SUVs better fuel economy. And you've got all these new competitors out there. Did you hear about the conference call that went on at Tesla last night? JP Morgan analyst telling clients the stock is going to be down of Tesla after Elon Musk disses Wall Street analysts calling them boring bonehead questions. <laughs> well, I sit on a lot of earnings calls, participated in an earnings call last week, and uh, we love our analyst calls. Um, the questions they ask the media, uh, you know, we'll always appreciate them. But by the way, any, any thoughts on NAFTA? It looks like we could have a deal uh, sooner rather than later. Right. We've been deeply involved in keeping up to date with the discussions, and um, I believe we can reach an agreement and that will work for everybody and modernize it, which is needed, but also obviously meet some of the needs of the U.S. administration. Because it really is the auto sector that's one of the real important points here. In it terms is. of where the cars will originate, where is the car being produced or the truck being produced? In North America, Canada, or Mexico? Right. And also a high, a high level of focus on where the supply base is, frankly. A lot of the jobs that have left the U.S. to Mexico and other places have actually been in the supply base. So there's been a big focus on that. And you'll, you'll see some of that, I think, when it's all said and so done. So you, you think we'll get a favorable deal for the auto I'm sector. optimistic that it'll work itself out. Yeah. Joe, it's good to see you. Great to see you. Thank, Thank you so much. Thanks. Joe Henricks is the uh, global head of uh, Ford Motor.